Meta governance is, without a doubt, one of the most unique and least understood things about the Index Co-op. In today's video, our governance lead, Mel.eth, explains more about what it is, how it works, and why you should care about it. Well, let's dive in. Let's um, maybe start at the beginning. Like, what is meta governance? Um, so, meta governance, uh, drawing from a uh, an existing parallel, is of of say uh, maybe BlackRock or Vanguard and uh, stocks is <clears throat> voting in in another DAO's uh, initiatives using the governance power we have in our products through the aggregation of those tokens in our vaults. So what we do is we essentially port that governance power to index token holders so that our community can go and enact, at least in our view, some of the objectives of our community um, more broadly in the ecosystem. Do you know how we actually access the meta governance? Like do each of these protocols specifically grant us the right to do it or is this something that's done permissionlessly this is something that's largely permissionless so effectively governance rights are conferred with with the the physical tokens um so where those tokens sit are, are where the the governance rights naturally accrue um <clears throat> our vault where most of those tokens sit uh we, we take that governance power and forward it uh this is for safety reasons so that we're not actually pushing ledger buttons within our vaults uh, we forward that to another address which we can do using some of the uh it's a little bit of governance on-chain voodoo, but um, mostly through Snapshot and some of the more on-chain uh, protocols. We forward that out and then a, uh, a committee of, of uh, it's effectively a multi-sig that executes these, these votes in the participant protocols. So we, the index holders vote, that vote then is executed by a committee um, in the participant protocol. Now, different protocols have different implementations. We use Snapshot, some are on-chain, and um, in that way, uh, we need to have some flexibility around how we execute in those participant protocols. So not entirely permissionless, not entirely automated. Um, however, uh, we do execute the, the will of the index token holders. So why should someone care about this? Because that's kind of the, the fundamental, it is this, but, but what does that, if you apply a little bit of imagination, mean? So I think it's a spectrum. Um, I think on that spectrum, safety would be sort of the one end. How do we how do we sort of protect and, and uh, sustain this thing that we're building? Um, and then at the other end, uh, like you said, we, we can really get creative with this stuff. We can maybe go beyond sort of just uh, voicing an opinion in another protocols initiatives. Uh, we might be able to put some forth our, ourselves. With our view of the ecosystem, we might be able to uh, it, initiate, say, uh, big, big, broad, cross-functional endeavors that would have positive sum impacts for multiple protocols. And in that way, you know, we all we all grow together. Uh, that's that's largely where I see it going. And we've actually done that right with um, I, I read recently uh, a really cool debrief on the use of meta governance with the Aave protocol involving Faye, I'm pretty sure. Correct. Yeah. I, the what we what we did there, we helped Faye effectively get get Faye listed on Ave, and I, I think that was very positive sum for both protocols. Uh, Ave having uh, robust you know assets listed on their protocol is good, and Faye being uh, you know a, a stable coin that's uh, been very well received by the ecosystem, being listed on Ave is good for Faye. Uh, this visibility is good for us. I think these are these are the, exactly the types of of positive sum initiatives. Uh, we we did do this for ourselves as well uh, with DPI, getting DPI listed on Aave, um, and then we took that a couple steps further um, with getting DPI <clears throat> listed on the Polygon market, and then again on the Aave Arc market as well. So yeah, all of these things are are viewed as positive sum, and they're initiatives that you know basically sprang up within the Index Coop uh, you know forums and. You know, we're, we're driven to, to execution and largely success. So to, to break that down a bit more of, of like what actually happened when they used the meta governance to, to list their token, Aave requires proposals for any changes like that. The mm -hmm. person or entity proposing needs to hold a certain amount of Aave in their wallet. And this is kind of a, a gating system to make sure that the people putting forward uh, proposals have some amount of stake in the Aave community already. Correct. Uh, Aave, Aave proposals are gated uh, via an amount of on-chain token um, to, to go ahead and propose. Uh, we we have enough uh, within DPI alone to, to, um, to, to propose. 
And so, yes, we, we can start that process effectively of, of that listing. In the way that, that we did it, uh, constructed it, we baked in sort of the, the proposal um, and then the, the voting in that way, right at onset within, within the process, rather than starting the process and then leaving the vote itself up to index uh, community token holders, just to have an end-to-end -end process that made sense. And, and we voted on that holistically and then executed. But yes, the, the physical or, or sort, of, sort of the operational uh, consideration is we propose something on our forum as an initiative, then we go over and, and do that thing once it's approved you know, by our community um, in the proposal sense. The, the meta governance votes that come up sort of ad hoc, uh, just whatever, you know, communities consider to be, uh, you know, other DAOs consider to be useful. We go and express an opinion, uh, but we don't, that, that the genesis of those ideas is within those community forums. And then we just basically agree or, or not. And we try and communicate with those, those DAOs to the extent possible to understand what they would like to happen. And really, we see, we see our operational assistance in this regard as uh, just largely being good ecosystem partners. Is Ave the only uh, protocol that we hold enough to make proposals on? We also have uh, Balancer, Yearn, Compound. So that's, that's a pretty a that's a pretty hefty amount of big hitters in the in the DeFi ecosystem. Yeah, yeah, we we have a very large amount of voting power uh, accumulated through through our indexing products. Yeah, Uniswap would be the other one. And, and it's strange that I missed that one because that one has been very top of mind lately. We are very close. I would say we're 80% we're of the way there, I believe, in being able to propose on Uniswap. I think this is going to unlock a, what I will call it, a good amount of value, um, but it's also really going to spark the conversation on what's the appropriate way to use this power because it is a, a great amount of power within the ecosystem concentrated within the, the index cooperative community. I actually, I actually don't know the answer to this. Do any of the other products partake in meta governance? Do, do we, do we collect uh, voting rights from, say, data or from MVI or products out into the future? It's a good question. Um, so currently, meta governance is only enabled for a portion of the products within DPI. We do have the ability to unlock meta governance for other uh, tokens within other products. I would say that's less available in data. However, one that's very sort of visible and well known at this point is ENS. There is interest in, in unlocking meta governance for the ENS token within data. Now, GMI, which is DeFi innovation, those uh, actually do, do get quite interesting. So some of those DeFi 2.0 protocols in, in GMI um, could be leveraged, say once, once GMI AUM hits uh, some points that, again, those hurdle rates start to make some sense and really sort of exercising that power um, will will come into play. I do think that at a certain point through GMI, we will be shaping um, what some of those those other DeFi 2.0 protocols are are doing, maybe in terms of where they're pointing their their liquidity or incentives uh, to, to incentivize that liquidity. Um, I find it a bit curious that with all the curve convex talk the last few months, that meta governance has been like a relatively quiet narrative. Do you have any thoughts on that? I think um, there's there's a lot to be said yet on meta governance as a as a conversation. I think that when it comes to uh, sort of if, if you compare value and maybe strategy, right, or, or voting or decisions, the value conversation is is one that happens daily, and it, it's really the conversation within the DeFi ecosystem. Um, governance, the decisions that get made, that conversation is ongoing, um, but largely sort of within DAOs. I think it's largely viewed as some of these things need to happen sort of in secret to be strategically useful. But I would say working up the, the taxonomy of, of understanding hasn't quite happened in the same way that value has, because I, I think it's a, a sort of a, a call and response process in a way, in that <clears throat> you know, gaining awareness um, and then sort of that understanding, being able to speak to these things in terms of what can be done um, and, and some of the more technical aspects of how to make those connections. You know, I, I would say we have a handful of, of people that truly understand um, the development side of, of say, snapshot, right? Uh, you say unique voting strategies, things like that. Whereas there are probably thousands of people that are capable of, of going in and, and hacking a smart contract in, in what I, a largely kind of conflatable way, right? And so I think that this, the conversation does need to happen and, and it's starting. 
So I, we're seeing more functional experts emerge. We're seeing more people interested in, in these things. We're seeing a lot of negative governance impacts um, kind of floating up to the top. We've seen some some visible governance hacks, you know, in in, uh, in the recent months. And so I think that we're as these things increase from a value perspective, I think we're going to see this sort of strategy and and voting perspective really come into play. How do you see meta governance shaping up like over the next, you know, whatever timeline, one year, two years, uh, five years into the future? I think that uh, in, in terms of looking forward, I think that we're going to see some alliances form over the next year, maybe two. I think that we're going to see DAOs effectively becoming a more political in their stances uh, towards uh, automation, um, towards decentralization, but also perhaps other things like ESG initiatives. I think we're going to see more governance hacks. I think we're going to see this uh, this conversation develop on both sides. Um, I think that we're going to see some DAOs get captured. I think we're going to find out maybe the limits of what governance can and can't do in relation to what people are willing or unwilling to do, you know, f for a DAO. Uh, and I think those conversations are going to be incredibly interesting. But ultimately, I do think that we're going to see this consistent push in, in two directions. And, and the conversation will become, um, is it necessarily necessary to centralize, to, to make good decisions? Or can we, in a distributed fashion, craft these decentralized organizations in such a way that these decisions can get made at the node level um, and, still, and still push us forward effectively and strategically through an entire ecosystem? And I think that that conversation developing is truly one of the more remarkably interesting things about this space. It's incredibly nascent and it's, it's why I'm here for that conversation, because I think that is going to truly be where, where the big brains are. And not that I think I'm one, but I, I want to be with the big brains. Well, Mel, is there anything else in, that you'd like to kind of talk about or explore that we, we didn't already? Hmm. I, th I think we did a, did a pretty good job of covering it. I would say um, the way I'm thinking about these things currently is that go governance is a conversation. It's a conversation that doesn't begin uh, in the forum, typically, and it's a conversation that doesn't end, you know, in, at the end of the vote. Um, largely, these things need to go out, get executed. There's knock on effects, and we learn a lot with every every subsequent vote. So it's how to keep that conversation uh, going in a positive way, um, because really, at the end of the day, strategy at, at a DAO is distributed. Um, anyone can come with an idea. Anyone can post that idea, get some traction or not, and then we as an organization can can move as just as just as a human body would move when when the brain, uh, you know, gives a set of instructions. And so, <clears throat> the way I think about it is, brain cells, nodes. You know, at the end of the day, we all need to move in the same direction in a coordinated way. Um, sometimes at speed, um, and sometimes we need to do it with style. Um, but really, governance is how we do it, and. Um, you know, in a distributed organization, this is what we have. And these are the challenges we're working through. And uh, we're going to keep doing it. So that's today's video. If you like the content, we release videos every Tuesday. So like and subscribe to not miss a beat. None of this was financial advice. See you next time.